Take a flat space and place some objects on it. If we were to deform the space, some interesting things would happen. Some areas would feel like they are pulling things inward. Others push them apart. And other areas stay the same. Ricci Curvature is the tool that captures this. It tells you how volumes shrink or grow, how paths called geodesics bend together or drift apart. In physics, it connects mass and energy directly to the shape of space-time. Ricci curvature is more than math. It is how the universe keeps track of what is inside of it. Ricci curvature is very powerful because it applies to any n-dimensional Riemannian manifold, not only to two-dimensional surfaces, like the Gaussian curvature. By the way, if you'd like to know more about these concepts, check out these videos in the channel where we dive deep into these concepts in a very clear way. Ricci curvature is defined as the contraction of the Riemann curvature tensor. We'll see very clearly what it means and what it looks like in a general space. But for now, think of it as a way of measuring how areas, volumes or hypervolumes, so in higher dimensions, expand or shrink as you move outward from a point. Ricci curvature at a point in space can behave in three distinct ways, depending on how geodesics respond nearby. If it's positive, geodesics tend to converge. If it's negative, they diverge. If it's zero, they stay parallel, as if space were flat in that direction. In some sense, a geodesics is the locally shortest path between two points, like a straight line, but in a curved space instead. It's the path a particle follows if no forces act on it except the shape of the space itself. So, as you can imagine, it's very useful when trying to study the curvature of a space. For example, imagine you're inside a foggy, curved universe and you release a cloud of particles from a single point, all moving freely in different directions. As time passes, do they spread apart? Do they collapse together? Or do they just stay evenly spaced? This isn't a question of force. There is no force acting on them. It's a question of geometry instead. And that's where the Ricci curvature tensor comes in. It tells you, at a specific point, how your cloud will behave. Whether it shrinks, stretches, or stays perfectly stable. It fixes the problem by translating the invisible bending of space into something measurable. In other words, the change of volumes. This is a representation of a general Ricci tensor for an n-dimensional space. In 2D, this curvature tensor becomes a 2x2 two two matrix that describes how space curves at a single point. For example, this matrix tells us that geodesics along the x-axis tend to convert so positive curvature, while those along the y-axis diverge, so negative curvature. A point in a space that behaves this way is called a saddle point. At this point, the curvature matches this matrix, compressing space in one direction and stretching it in the other. This is just one example, but you can easily imagine how this tensor would change from point to point for different types of curvature. So this is a saddle. Another representation can be a bowl. Or 
or an upside down bowl. Or even a point in a flat space. What about the off diagonal terms? R01 and R10. They are all zero in these examples. What would it mean if one of them were not zero? If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget that on our website, we have a section where you can send us your own research. More details in the description. In that case, the chosen intrinsic coordinate system is not what we would naturally expect. This is the coordinate system defined on the surface itself, not from an embedding in 3D space. It is not what we would expect because the coordinate axes are not aligned with the directions of curvature. If you imagine releasing particles from a particular point, they would still follow geodesic paths, but these paths would not be aligned with the grid anymore. Algebraically, the off-diagonal terms represent directional coupling. Motion in one intrinsic direction, say x, contributes to the geodesic expansion or contraction in another direction, say y. However, this is not an intrinsic property of the geometry itself, but rather of the coordinate frame that you've chosen. The Ricci tensor is a geometric object, so it exists independently of coordinates, but its matrix representation depends on the basis. If you change to a new intrinsic coordinate system, aligned with the eigenvectors of the Ricci tensor at that point, the matrix becomes diagonal. This process is called diagonalization and it reveals the principal Ricci curvatures, which are intrinsic and therefore independent of the coordinate choice. Visually, this corresponds to rotating the perspective of the surface. Let's see a concrete example. Say that at a specific point on a curved space, on a curved surface, the Ricci curvature tensor is this, this is a symmetric matrix, because Rij equals Rji. By the way, just a technical detail here. The Ricci tensor is always symmetric. This is a direct consequence of the way in which it is built. In other words, from the Riemann tensor via a contraction. We'll not get into too many details here. But the Riemann tensor satisfies a special symmetry. And this makes the Ricci tensor into a symmetric matrix. Anyway, going back to our example, we can calculate the eigenvalues of this Ricci matrix transformation. If you want to learn how to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix, as well as a very visual and intuitive interpretation of these concepts, check out this video in the channel. Therefore, the diagonalized Ricci tensor is this, which reveals itself as a saddle point. Notice an interesting fact. Even though the original Ricci curvature tensor looked positive in all directions, it is just the illusion of the quote-unquote bad coordinate choice. Once diagonalized, we see the true story. Curvature pulls piece together in one direction and pushes it apart in another. The eigenvectors tell us those directions. They are intrinsic, geometric objects drawn right inside the surface's tangent space. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.